right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Barb Garrison, who's up in Boulder, Colorado. How are you doing, Barb? I'm great. Thanks, John. Yeah, I just always refer to everywhere as up nowadays because, you know, I live in Southern California and San Diego and it's like close to the Mexican border. So I just always assume everything is up, even though sometimes yes. they're actually to the side. <laughs> up and over. <laughs> up and over, exactly. And so um, um, Barb's company is the phenomenally named Internal Groove. That's such a great name, Barb. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And Barb is a, a highly sought after certified career money breakthrough coach, job you love expert and join uh, and created job. I love revolution where she's a rabble rouser for freedom. Love it. Rabble rouser for freedom. So let's get <laughs> rabble rousing because today we're going to talk about growing personally to thrive professionally. So uh, why don't we just start off? What, what do you mean by growing personally and, and, and then, make that connection to how this helps you professionally. Yes. So I've been, I've been a career and money breakthrough coach for 14 years. And what I've seen over the years, most people come to me when they need help and they think their challenges, their problems, their stuck points are actually external, like outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's their boss. It's their clients who are difficult. It's, you know, their colleagues, you know, they, they can't, they can't this, they can't that. There's sort of a lot of external reasons. And what I have found is that's only about 20% of the issue. Yes. Do I help people with those things? Yes. No question. But what I have found is that about 80% of people's challenges are things they are not noticing at all. And that really is what I call the hows or how they do their work, how they bring themselves to what they do. And that requires a much different perspective that to me is really about personal growth because when you work on that, it's amazing. And I've seen this with clients over many years and in my own business that when you work on yourself, it's like suddenly your revenue grows. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what's fascinating always is that I, I think, and, um, and it took me a while to figure this out, but how important self-awareness really is. And unfortunately, a lot of us grow in self-awareness maybe late on. It'd be great if we could always get it earlier in our careers and earlier in our lives. But I do think it's, it's that self-awareness. And as, you're, as you correctly point out, when you suddenly realize that you are pretty much accountable for everything in your life and, and when you accept that fact, it's very liberating. There's no question about it. And, you know, it's easy to say we wish we could get it sooner. My theory is you have to have a few bumps and bruises before you're ready to even take in that wisdom or be willing to look. You know, when we're younger, we think we know everything. As we age, we actually realize we know less and less. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. It's absolutely. Um, and there was a saying I read the other day. What was it? It was... Uh, experience um, is a hard taskmaster where they deliver um, it delivers the test first and the lessons afterwards. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, I, I think one of the most important things we can do is really listen to ourselves. I don't think most people listen to themselves mm -hmm. enough. And when I say listen, I mean, really notice and listen to that, you know, sort of quieter inner voice, you know, I'll call it intuition or your gut instincts, things like that because that holds a lot of information for us that we often ignore in sort of the let's just say the noise of a busy life mm -hmm. well it's funny you should say that um, because I mean I totally agree and I think it's I do think we ignore sometimes our gut instincts or the fact is that maybe when we say or do something that maybe we inherently know that we didn't deliver in the best way. It wasn't the most positive thing. It wasn't the thing that's going to, to really help us, but we push that aside and we do it anyway. And we realize how, how, you know, how much we're, we're hindering ourselves by doing that. Absolutely. And there's a reason for that. Most of the things that we deal with that keep us stuck or frustrated as professional adults are habits. And, you know, these aren't habits, you know, like sleep habits and, and I don't drink enough water. Well, those are separate health habits. I'm really talking about mental and emotional habits that we have that in many cases we've been using for a long time in our lives. And we're using them actually for a good reason. 
And what I mean by that is that people only do what actually works for them. You know, there may be a downside or we may get to a point in our lives where that strategy is no longer working, but it's so ingrained in us that it really is truly a habit. The good news is habits can be changed and there are things that we can easily work on. And so they don't have to be character flaws. You know, I hear so often my clients say, oh, that's just how I am. Well, I don't believe that. No, No baby is born with the kinds of habits where we get ourselves in our own way. Yeah, I, I know. I, I love you brought up that point because it is a real. Uh, it is. It is one of my uh, bugbears, if you like. It's when somebody does say, "Oh well, you know, that's just the way I am," or, or "You know what I'm like," and I just think, "Well, yeah," but as you say, you can change it. But also, guess what? If that may be what you're like, but we don't have to put up with it. Yes. You know, I mean, what made you? What made it by? It's almost like by saying that. Do you think that that somehow exonerates you? and means that everybody else then just has to accept your behavior. Well, guess what? We don't. Yes. And actually, that is a habit right there. And it's one that I see, you know, I'll refer to it as powerlessness, as Mm -hmm. if there's nothing I can do. Like, there's no responsibility I can take. There's no self-awareness I can create to set out to do something different. It's like, oh, that's just who I am. That's what I'm stuck with. And that powerlessness really can translate to, you know, how we work with our clients, how we do sales, Mm -hmm. how we interact with other people in business. Um, It can show up in other ways. And I think that's great. I mean, I think that's great, uh, you know, when next time somebody says that, I mean, you don't have to actually say this to them, but I think it'd be great if you could just say, wow, I didn't realize you were so powerless. I I feel really bad for you because they wouldn't be expecting you. They wouldn't be expecting you to say (laughs) that, right? But I'm not saying that you would say that, but I think I'm just trying to make a point here is, that instead of actually excusing yourself, what you're actually saying is like, oh, well, I have no power over making my life better or over the things that I do. I'm just, I'm just a creature of habit. That's just all yes. I am. Yes. You know what we could ask, though, that might be a little bit more gentle? We might say, really, that's so interesting. Were you born like that? <laughs> it makes people sort of stop and be like, wow, you know, we, babies don't have those qualities. Babies don't compare themselves to others. <laughs> Yeah. And what is it that, what is that with the, isn't it Dr. Phil or someone that's a famous, like, you know, how's that working out for you? Or whatever yes. That says. You guys, <laughs> yes. How's that working for you? Um, and I, and I do think if you take it in a professional sense, like if your career is stagnating or your sales are stagnating or whatever it is in your job, you're not happy in your job. Maybe you need to look at the, as you said earlier, the habits that maybe got you there are maybe now hindering you. Absolutely. In fact, you're being gentle by saying, maybe you ought to look at that. I'm going to say, (laughs) yes, you absolutely should. Because Mm -hmm. I really have seen that we can only grow our business, our career, and our results as much as we're willing to grow personally. Mm -hmm. So if you hit a plateau, that's usually, it's a little tap on the shoulder that says, uh, hey, complaining about this isn't going to get you anywhere, but looking at where you can grow personally may actually move the needle. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, if you're, if you're not happy in your personal life and if you're not happy with who you are or, you know, you've, you've got a lot of negative thoughts. And I, I read somewhere, I think with psychology today, that about 87% of our self-talk every day is negative anyway, right? Uh, that's that, I mean, there's, it's impossible to think that you could suddenly switch it on for the time that you're engaging with a prospect or a customer or a colleague or, or whatever the situation is that you can just turn it on, become a different person for that hour and then go back to being the unhappy, miserable person you were before. No, no. And not only does that not work, but I can tell you people can smell it on you when you're faking it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they, they may not be aware, but people pick up on those clues. Absolutely. And so, plus, I will say that is a quick recipe to burnout because when you're faking yeah. it, you know, every time you walk into a meeting with a prospect or a potential client, by the end of the day, you're exhausted because it's like putting on a, a mask, you know, 12 hours a day or six meetings a day or whatever it may be. <laughs> And as somebody who actually had to travel for an emergency situation during the pandemic and had to travel internationally and who wore a mask for 16 hours, I can tell you it is exhausting when you actually wear a, 
<laughs> when you wear a physical one, it's, it's just as exhausting as wearing a metaphorical one. <laughs> John, that's so funny. I wasn't even thinking about a pandemic mask, yeah. um, but that's about perfect for this time, right? <laughs> it is. And it's a perfect analogy because just think about that. If you're wearing a mask, and like I said, I did it like for the travel, like through airports and connecting flights and all that. It's, but it, it, think about how uncomfortable those masks are. There may be a necessity right now, but think about how com uncomfortable they are. And to your point, Think about if you're wearing that metaphorical mask all day long, think of how how uncomfortable and exhausting that would be. So maybe you have to figure out how you can be, figure out how to be a better version of yourself and be authentic as opposed to just creating a fake version. Absolutely. And you know what I would even say, you know, th those kind of masks that are not the truth of who we are, you know, it's really a full face mask. It's not just yeah, the bottom part of is. our face. <laughs> and that makes it even, even more exhausting. And, you know, listen, there's some people who walk around like that all the time, but I don't recommend it. I will tell you, I, I think that there is real power in our own individual truth because mm -hmm. we are all different and there's only one of each of us and there's real strengths in that. If we can get clear what that is and what it looks like and how can we leverage those strengths. And I think, and I think uh, genuine, I mean, if you, again, if we take it back to a business um, scenario or even a, a sales or marketing or whatever is I think today people are really starting to come around to craving a level of authenticity in the interactions that they have with people um, because the world has become very superficial and very plastic, very immediate, very, you know, a snapshot here of somebody and like Instagram and all this stuff that I think people really crave authenticity. And I think there is a real value, almost a competitive differentiating value in being an authentic person, because I think people crave that in their interactions. I 150% agree. And in fact, I will tell you, I think it's a bit of a superpower when you are doing sales because people do business with who they know, like, and trust. And mm -hmm. if you are somebody that tells their own truth and acts like who they truly are, that's a much easier person to connect with. And let's face it, all sales is about relationships. And, you know, in this day and age, I don't believe any of those like 1970s sales techniques work at all. I think showing up and being the best version of you is the greatest sales technique that you could possibly have. Yeah. And now yeah, you're showing up virtually a lot of the time. So you have to really pay attention to, to how you engage with people. So as, as you start to look at maybe maybe for the first time, and this is actually a good time right now because you probably have a little more time in your hands and to do a little bit more introspection. As you do some introspection, what are some of the clues that you should look for uh, of things that may be holding you back? Well, the first thing is you want to get clear on what your habits are. What are the mm -hmm. habits that are causing you to feel frustrated? And the important element of that is to look at what is the payoff of those habits. Now, you know, what that really means is what's working for you about those habits because you wouldn't be doing them if they weren't at some level working for you nobody does anything that doesn't work for them mm -hmm. so if you can determine the payoff that you can get from that then you can start to see the truth of what's going on there. You know, I, I liken it to, you know, when you're a little kid and you think there's a monster under the bed and you have to call your mom to get the flashlight. And once she shines the light, you can see, oh, it's just a couple of books and a jacket. It's not actually a monster. So, you know, this doesn't have to be, you know, a lobotomy we give ourselves, but <laughs> it does take some quiet time to start to notice, you know, what is it that really motivates us to do these things that aren't working? What is yeah. that payoff? I just got flashes of one flew over the cooker's nest there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. But, um, but yeah, I do. I, I think that's such a, uh, and I really want to kind of underline this for everybody. I do think that's a critical takeaway is so far. So identify your habits, but just don't identify the habits, identify what they are doing, what purpose they're serving for you. Cause I think that's so powerful when you realize that yes, I'm doing I'm doing this, but here's the reason why I'm doing this, and then you and then you can address that reason. Yes, and in fact, I actually think there's one step in between, mm -hmm. which is forgiving yourself. This mm -hmm. is not an opportunity to beat yourself up because if you're feeling shame or embarrassment or discomfort about it, and then we're we're just adding to our self doubt, that is also a habit. So we don't mm -hmm. want to contribute to that. So identify it 
get clear on the payoffs, forgive yourself, and then look for ways to transform that habit. And one of the ways to do that is to look for other areas in your life where you've been successful making a change. There's probably a clue there somewhere that can help you transform that. Yeah, I, I, I love that as well. And I like the idea of self-forgiveness because I think it's, it, is, it is very important. It's very important to acknowledge um, you know, where, how you've gotten to where you are, but then obviously to forgive yourself as long as you haven't done anything to egregious. Yes. I mean, we're not but, talking about, yeah, you know, yeah. injuring other people or anything I terrible. I mean, you know, forgiving yourself for having habits because they've worked yeah. for you up until now. Mm -hmm. It's just that they no longer are working. And one of the ways we can forgive ourselves is to recognize we were just doing the best we could with what uh -huh. we had. But now we have more information because we're able to see more clearly when we know what the payoffs are. Yeah, and I think that, and not to get sidetracked or whatever, but I think that's also a great piece of advice for people who are dealing with other, maybe other people who in their lives, like previously or whatever, it's another good piece of advice to also look at them and think, yeah, I didn't like what they did, but they were acting the best they could at the time with the skills or the tools that they had. And therefore, yes. you know, I need to set that aside and move on but yeah I, I i really like that idea i really i like that process that you've outlined there because i think then it gives people the opportunity it's kind of a fresh start really isn't it mm -hmm. yeah kind of a clean slate it is and it really will help you sort of refresh your own energy and and give you a little a little shot in the arm for your career as well because it's sort of like unloading some bricks off your back yeah, and that's why I said at the beginning that I think um, when when you when you start to become personally personally accountable and you take responsibility for your life and say, okay, I'm here where I am today. Yes, there are things happen that I have no control over, but I put myself in this circumstance and I stay in this circumstance by choice, right? And when you take when you accept that, then you uh, realize that you can you can make a lot of changes in your life if you want. You're not the victim of external forces. Unfortunately, we live in a culture today that tends to not, you know, go the opposite way of taking yes. accountability. Everything is external. But I just but I think it's just so powerful when you and so liberating when you say, yes, I am responsible for where I am today, good, bad or indifferent. And therefore, I can change that reality. Yes. And that doesn't mean fault. It doesn't mean beat yourself mm -hmm. up. It doesn't mean yeah. create shame, but it does mean look clearly and be willing to forgive yourself and recognize why you might be doing something and then choose to do it differently. I just, I cannot under, underscore that enough because there's so many people walking around right now, you know, banging their head against a wall around their career and they're looking for the solution in the wrong places. Yeah, and I also think sometimes it, it's all, I think there's another aspect to this as well. And I think sometimes uh, people don't ask themselves why they're doing what they're doing today in terms of the, the career, you know, maybe if you're, whatever you're doing, if you're a salesperson, if you're something else, why am I actually doing it? What is, what is, what is my reason? What's my motivation to do it? Uh, have I just, am I just doing it because that's what's expected of me because I have a situation where I've got to earn money or whatever it is. But I think until you examine why you're doing something, I think then you're just going to drift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and eventually you start dragging yourself out of bed. It's really, really hard to keep doing that, you know, day over day, year over year, um, over, over time. And uh, yeah, I, I really fully agree with that. And I think there's, you know, you said some things we don't have control over. I think that's absolutely true. But what we have 100% control over is our reaction to the way things sure. are going mm -hmm. or what's happening or what someone else says or does. Yeah. And, and then, you know, we can, make a, we can make a conscious choice to be positive too. And I, a very wise person once told myself and my wife many, many, many years ago that she said like, Okay, say you have, you have, we'll say sales call, right? You have a sales call next Tuesday, and it's probably the most, it's an incredibly important one. It's a massive deal. If this goes right, everything's going to be fantastic. If it goes wrong, it's going to be catastrophic to your career, whatever. So you have two choices, right? Between now and next Tuesday, you can choose to worry about it, think of all the bad outcomes, stress, and all of that, or you can choose to think, yes, everything's going to go well. It's going to be a positive outcome. And then when Tuesday comes, it doesn't really matter what happens. You had a great week leading up to it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's true. You'll have a lot more fun. And uh, that's for sure. Yeah, we have to be our own best advocate. If we are not our own mm -hmm. best advocate, nobody else is going to be. And that's not the same as ego. It's more mm -hmm. of an internal conversation that we have with ourselves. Um, instead of being really committed to our doubts inside our mind to really be that good friend that we would be to someone else who needed support to actually give that to ourselves. Yeah, and I, and I love that point too. Is that that idea of 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 how if you were somebody, if you were somebody, if you were looking as you as somebody else, what advice would you give you? Right, as you said, you probably have friends who you give loads of advice to, and all of this, and you're always trying to help, and you got to at some stage put yourself in that position and say, "Wow, what would I say to me?" Yes, I ask my clients that question all the time. If you had a dear friend and they were in this situation, what advice would you give them? And how would you support them? And I'd say that, and, and I'd say that's quite transformational in, in, in how people react to that because it's, it's such a different way of looking at things. And as you said, it's not, it's not ego, egocentric at all, but I mean, it's like you can't operate effectively in this world and help other people if you're not at your best. And I think it's important that we know what that is, meaning what are the components that we are really strong in and where are we our best? Because then we can do more of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about expecting to know everything there is or be all things to all people. It's really about knowing where we have those strengths. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, that's um, an interesting point, though, to also to, to maybe finish up on here is, I think you know there's a lot of leadership and management theory um, that has come before that has been absolutely wrong, and, and you know, and and even in companies, you know, we do these performance appraisals every year, right? and we go, Barb, you did you know A, B, and C very good, but here are the three areas that you need to work on, the things that you're <laughs> not good, and of course we normally spend like five minutes on the things you did good, and like the rest of the hour on all the things that you need to improve on, instead of to your point going. Let's focus on the things that, Barb, you do well, and let's figure out how we can get you to do more of the things you do well, and we can make your job all about the stuff that you do well, and stop trying to make people good at things they're not good at. Absolutely. 110% agree. Plus, it makes our work much more fun. Work doesn't mm -hmm. feel as difficult, and it takes a lot less energy, which, which leaves more energy for <laughs> us to have a more well-rounded, full life, too. Yeah, instead of trying to fix somebody's what you perceive as their weakness and you're never going to fix it. So guess what? Two people are going to be frustrated, you and the other person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Lose, lose. <laughs> <laughs> I call that two against zero. <laughs> <laughs> two against zero. I like that. That's great. Well, listen, Barb, this has been fantastic. And all of Barb's information is going to be in her contributor bio below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I'm, as I mentioned, I've been in my business for 14 years as a career and money breakthrough coach. I specialize primarily in working with burnt out professionals, which is why I have an <laughs> opinion on a lot of that, yeah. um, and help them redesign their career so that they truly can leave out of bed on Monday mornings. Um, and that might look like a lot of different things. You know, for some people, it's moving into being an entrepreneur because they've been keeping that a secret. For other people, it's about optimizing the job that they have, working on their own habits, like we've talked about today. Um, one thing I can also offer your guests as a gift, um, something I would recommend is mondaymorningleap.com which is um, a free gift for me to get um, a short tip every Monday morning that will shift your week and how your perspective is on it. Oh, that's fantastic. Monday morning leap. Dot com. Dot com. Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, as I said, I think uh, the, the pandemic has probably given a lot of people a lot of time to reflect on things. And I'm sure there's a lot of executives out there who suddenly come to the conclusion after taking a few walks and, you know, lunchtime walks or runs that they're burnt out. So I'm thinking that you're going to be kept pretty busy for a while. Yes, I have been very busy lately. <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing. All right, listen, thanks, Barb. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.